does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again at A4, another game review about the special Kickstarter review. And today I'm excited to be checking out Time Baron from Quibble Games. This is for two players, ages 10 and up. It'll take you about 30 minutes to play. And in Time Baron, you and another player will be racing throughout time trying to, uh, let me read the back to you, because it is, it is heavy stuff. You're going to be simply pawns. People are simply pawns in your quest to defeat the other barons and become the ruler of a unified human race by laying down a bunch of cards in front of you and uh, worker placement, all sorts of stuff like that. Good stuff. Let's open it up and see how it plays. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Time Barons. As I always like to mention, this is a promotional copy I have right here, even though it does look very, very nice. Uh, first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet. Tons of artwork and play examples. It is an outstanding rule booklet. Ten pages, double sided, full color. Very, very well done rule booklet. It will have you plump and playing in no time. Uh, next, we're going to go over what you're going to get. First, you're going to get these little blue things. These are going to represent your people. Each one is going to be indicative of one person, and you will need these people to uh, to activate cards and do all sorts of various different things on your board. Uh, next, you're going to get two four-sided dice. Each player is going to get one, and this is going to help you keep track of what time period you are in, because there are four time periods, period one, two, three, and four. And obviously, as you can see, you go from a sword to a gun to a rocket to a science-y thing, and you're going to be advancing throughout time. DNA, that's what it is. You're going to be going to be advancing throughout time, and obviously, uh, the further you get along the track, or the card track, or whatever you want to call it, the better the cards are going to be. Next, you are going to get these red cubes. These are going to be damage markers, because your buildings will only be able to take a certain amount of damage. So, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a real quick mock two-player hand. I almost forgot that there are one more cards I want to show you. And that is going to be each player's little cheat sheet card. I love when people do this. Keep doing it, people. Uh, but this is going to tell you all the actions you can do in a turn and all the different rules that you need to know. They really will help you out throughout the game. So, what you're trying to do here is, here is you're going to be trying to destroy your opponent. How do you win the game and destroy all your opponent? You need to kill all of their followers, all their blue people, or have the most followers when the cards run out. I don't know how you would possibly do that, so most of the time it is just kill all of your opponent's followers. So, start off the game, you're going to start on level 1, and each player is going to be dealt 5 cards. Uh, you're also going to get a homeland card. Uh, this is it's just a homeland. It's very simple. This is where your people were born and raised. And when you start off the game, you're going to start on your homeland with 10 people on there. Your homeland also has 6 defense, uh, as you can see at the bottom of that card right there, which is uh, the strongest thing that you're going to have. Uh, so you definitely don't want your homeland to get destroyed, because if your homeland gets destroyed, all the people on there also get destroyed. But you're going to be moving those people, as you'll see in a second. So, we got our five cards. We're going to decide who goes first. We'll just say it's me. And what's going to happen on your turn? It's very simple. You are going to have three actions, and only three actions you can take every single turn. And the actions you can do on your turn are you can draw a card from your time period. So you could draw three cards if you wanted to, and your turn would be over. So you can draw the card from your time period. Or you can gain a follower, which is just as simple as... Take it and put it on any of the sites that you have out there, and we'll get to the sites in a second. So you can gain a follower, you can draw a card, you can relocate. This would mean that you can move any number of your people to any one of your sites that you're going to have around there. And that's going to be one action. You can move them wherever you want to move them. You can play a card from your hand, so you might play an attack card or you might build something. So, for instance, uh, we might want to build this temple. If we did that, that would be an action. Or we might play this Divine Inspiration, which will let us draw one card from the next time period. So, if I played this, I can draw one from level two. Uh, you can activate abilities, and some of these do cost actions. Some of them do not. Uh, and we will get to more of those in a second. Those are on the different sites you have. And last, you can upgrade to the next time period, or to the next level. Now, how this works is this is not a one-cost action. If you would like to upgrade to level 2, you would have to spend two of your actions. If you'd like to upgrade to level 3, you're going to have to spend three of your actions. If you want to get up to a level 4, you're going to have to spend four of your actions. You're saying, what? 
I only have three actions. Well, there'll be cards that give you more actions, obviously. So let's go through a real quick mock hand so you can see how it's going to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, looking at my hand, uh, you know what? I'm going to play this temple. Now, here's how this works. This is going to cost me an action to play this temple. My temple down here has three health whenever I finally get it, uh, when it starts to get attacked, and I'll play it down. But it's going to cost me one card to play because it's one right there. Now, this is similar to like uh, Race for the Galaxy or San Juan, where the currency are cards in your hand. So essentially, I'd say, oh, I'm going to have to get rid of one card to pay the one card currency. So I'll get rid of this duplicate temple I have. And now I have a temple out here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so... I have my temple out here. That's my first action. Uh, my next action is, you know what? I'm going to draw one card. And, oh, I drew a library, which is a pretty good card. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to relocate my people because I want to have my temple active. Now, how this works is there's going to be, uh, there's going to be things right here, uh, little dots. In order to activate the special ability of my temple, I'm going to need two people on my temple two of my followers on my temple, like so. I can have more, but I need at least two. Now, the temple's special ability is I can sacrifice one of these followers, I can kill them, and I will gain an additional action. So that's a really nice one. So I'm going to go ahead, and for my last third action, I'm going to relocate. Uh, I'll put five guys on this, and I'll have five guys on here, and those are my three actions, and my turn is up. So this guy will go and he'll look at his cards and he'll say, ooh, he's got a catapult. So he's definitely going to play that catapult because that's pretty sweet. So we'll play a catapult, which means he needs to get rid of two hands. So he'll get rid of these two play cards. And that was his first action. The next thing he's going to do is he's going to relocate people. So that would be his second action. So he's going to move five people over here. Now, what I want to show you is how some of these actions work. As I mentioned earlier, some of the uh, special abilities on your cards are going to cost you an action. Uh, uh, that's, for instance, right here. This would right here, if you have three people on here, you can do one damage to an opponent's place. But it's going to cost you three people and one action. Now, you don't lose your people, but you do lose one of your actions. However, if you have five people on here, you can do one damage every single turn automatically every time, which is really nice. Now, the last thing I want to go over right here is how the damage works. We're going to pretend that, boom, I got my five people on here, and I'm going to do one damage. Now, how this works is I get to decide which of my places, since he's attacking me, takes the damage of the red cube, and I'll do it on my home lane. So my homeland will take one damage, but in addition to that one damage, one of my followers on the homeland, boom, has to die. So in addition to taking damage, you're also going to be losing followers, which is never good. And he would take a third action, and he'll just, you know, he'll draw a card or whatever. Uh, so I would then continue on, and you know what, I'll say, all right, I got three actions, I'm going to take two of my actions and move on to level two. And for my third action, I would draw a level two card, which is a blockade. Uh, kill one follower of each of your opponent's sites. Now, this is just a one-time action thing. Because in addition to, uh, like, places that you can lay down, you also have one-time actions that you pay it and just something happens, which is really good. Uh, but anywho, you're going to continue moving along the line going from time period 1, 2, 3, until 4, and once you get to 4, normally the game is going to end relatively quick because they are incredibly powerful. There's only 5 of them. And uh, whoever is the last man standing, or lady standing, who still has people, is going to be the winner of Time Barons. Alrighty then, Time Barons from Quibble Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game's only for two players. Uh, if you got a bigger game group, not going to be for you. You can't solo it. Only for two. Uh, also, uh, the artwork is going to be hit or miss. It's black and white. It's a very distinct style of artwork. It's dark artwork, but it's not really that dark. Like, it's not scary or anything like that. Um... It's, it's really, it's going to be some people's cup of tea, and it's going to be other people's not their cup of tea. Uh, I personally like the artwork, though. Uh, the last thing that you might not like about the game is it kind of has that vibe where, like, if somebody gets to level, to the time period four, and you're, like, still stuck on time period two, you're pretty much screwed. I mean, you got to stay at least a little bit close to somebody, or else this game will just blow out, because the, uh, the time period four cards are really good. Moving on to the pros, though, of Time Baron. 
I really like Time Baron. Uh, I definitely think if you were in the market for a two-player game, you need to check this out because it is a, a very, very fun game. Now, um, he sent me a prototype of this game last year, and he was working out tweaks and fixing things, and we love the game now. And the, we got, or love the game back then. We got a copy just about a month ago, we've been playing it, and we love it even more now. He's tweaked a few rules here and there. He included the four-sided dice, which is a nice touch. I don't know who the guy is who can't keep track of what... I, I, I think it's an unnecessary touch, but it's a nice touch. It's a nice thing to have, period, to have a dice in front of you you can play with whenever you want. Uh, but I did like the artwork. I like the game the gameplay. I like the two-player kind of worker, uh, worker placement game. You need to be positioning your people in the exact right spot based on what your opponent lays out. Because if your opponent lays out something that you need to destroy, it's like, oh, I need to get over here and destroy it. Whereas before, you might have been focusing on your hospital or getting more actions or a variety of different things. I really do enjoy Time Barons. I think you should check it out if you are in the market for a two-player game. Check out the Kickstarter link below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Time Barons. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. What?